fishing. Let's go over some of the biggest, uh, the transfers that have actually committed to other schools and the ones still left in the portal. Biggest kind of like household names, um, the names you probably do know. And if you don't know, you should. Um, there's a lot of uh, lower FCS and FBS level players that are in the portal that are going to make instant impacts on big teams and big programs. And they're going to transfer there and they're going to do well. And, and, and that's the greatest part about the transfer portal is that some of these lower guys can actually um, put in the work and actually get up to a better program and improve themselves and make a career out of this, right? Because that's every single college player's uh, really their dream, right, is to play in the NFL. So a lot of them are really striving for that, and that's going to be one of the best things about the portal. There's a lot of bad things, too, as far as uh, entitlement with the portal. You know, kids want to jump in right away, not getting play in time. The NIL, um, the NIL uh, structure and how it's laid out and some uh, players not – making as much money as others, feeling like they need more, um, and, and from program to program that can change. And a lot of players enter the portal or even tease going into the portal just so that they can kind of negotiate NIL deals, and that's kind of one of the flaws with it. But uh, let's go over this real quick, just to, you know, just a few names here, and, and I'm kind of just giving you all the info out here. Devin Leary, one of the highest-rated quarterbacks in the portal, transfers to Kentucky from NC State. Uh, this one to me, uh, he might fit pretty well in the offensive uh, of scheme at Kentucky. I mean, you know, Will Levis leaving. Um, we'll kind of see how that goes. It's it's kind of an interesting one. Um, but he he does remind me kind of, you know, more of a pocket passer, but kind of can run at the same time. So, we'll you know, we'll see how that kind of plays out. Kentucky doesn't really have too many elite weapons at wide receiver. Um, the offensive line plays very, very well. And, you know, Kentucky likes to run the ball. So, Maybe that could be a, a good place for him to be kind of a game manager and make things happen when he can. And and so, you know, we'll kind of keep an eye on that. JT Daniels has transferred to Rice. Uh, this one is weird to me. Now, JT Daniels um, already played at Southern Cal, already played at Georgia and West, uh, West Virginia. Now, Southern Cal didn't really work out. He got injured. Now, uh, he went to Georgia, um, started pretty much balling out, throwing about 400 pass yards like, per game damn near. Uh, and really, really balling out and goes to West Virginia and doesn't look bad. Um, doesn't look bad. JT Daniels, not a very mobile quarterback, uh, obviously, but very, very accurate, great decision making skills. And when he went to West Virginia, you saw a lot of drop passes from the wide receivers. He would drop it right in the bucket uh, of the receiver's hands for uh, a lot of times. And um, it just didn't really work out. West Virginia has roster problems. And like I said, the drop passes really has killed them there. And now Rice is interesting. Rice, Rice. Of all schools, you go to Rice. Now, you would think that JT Daniels could have went to a bigger program. Um, and ever since Georgia, he's been going to smaller ones, and now he's at Rice. Now, Rice actually made a bowl game this year. This is damn really interesting. I'm not going to say too much about this, but it, it may, does Rice have something going on that we don't know about? I don't I don't know. But, uh, yeah, JT Daniels that go, is uh, tra transferring to Rice. Uh, very weird. He could be the first quarterback and will be the first quarterback to start at four different college football programs. That's very, very interesting. A very interesting stat. Uh, like I said, JT Daniels, former five-star, a big-time recruit. But anyway, moving along, Justin Flo to Arizona. Arizona, very interesting here. Uh, Justin Flo, former five-star, number one uh, rated defensive player and I think the 2019 class. Dude's an absolute animal. Um, <sighs> reasons unknown why he's leaving Oregon with Dan Lanning kind of coming in there, especially with early, early signing day, and you see him kind of turning that thing around. Kind of wondering why he left. Maybe he just didn't get along. You, you see all kinds of different reasons for these transfers. But going to Arizona, Arizona has taken a step up uh, this year as far as the play on the field. Arizona has been terrible. and uh, But interesting, interesting, really, really there. Um, Drew Pine, the quarterback from Notre Dame, second string uh, behind Tyler Buckner. Tyler Buckner gets hurt. Drew Pine comes in for the majority of the season. He's going to Arizona State. Uh, so Drew Pine going to Arizona State. Nor Notre Dame is going to have to find themselves a quarterback for this year unless they're expecting Tyler Buckner to be 100% um, recovered going into next season. Interesting there. Arizona State gets the, speaking of Oregon, uh, the offensive coordinator from Oregon going to Arizona State to be the head coach, one of the youngest head coaches in college football uh, coming from o Oregon. So interesting to see there. We'll see how that plays out. A lot of interesting storylines that are going to be uh, looked at going into the next season. Um, speaking of Arizona State, Emory Jones transfer from Arizona State. This is his third college he's going to, to Cincinnati. Now, I had, I had doubts that he would actually even be picked up by another Power 5 program, but he's picked up by Cincinnati. 
Cincinnati going to the Big 12, but Emory Jones last year of uh, eligibility going to Cincinnati. Uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, the Louisville coach obviously going there, Scott Satterfield, and then um, we'll, you know, kind of want to decline at Louisville, kind of on the hot seat, and then actually just moves programs to kind of keep <laughs> keep from getting fired. At AKA, just uh, you know, we'll. I, I don't know about that one, uh, but. Emory Jones, I'm always rooting for him. Came from Florida, my team. So um, I, I hope all the success for him. Hopefully he'll be the starter there. Um, Kobe Pace, running back from Clemson. Third string running back, but a really, really high rated one. Didn't get much playing time. Transferring to uh, Virginia, he's going to be reunited with Tony Elliott, the, the former offensive coordinator for Clemson. Um, that's going to be an interesting one to watch as well. Uh, probably a really good fit, especially if, if Tony Elliott can start really uh, – working in his, his scheme and everything and, and get him a quarterback in there with Brendan Armstrong, Brendan Armstrong transferring from uh, Virginia, uh, the lefty quarterback tough as nails dude is, is an absolute beast still in the portal. Hasn't decided yet. I don't think, uh, but interesting there though. So they, they are in need of a quarterback, but Kobe pays a good, a good addition uh, real quick. Tommy Brockemeyer, uh, offensive lineman, I believe to uh, from Bama to TCU. Interesting. TCU can definitely use him. Another two to TCU. Uh, JoJo Earl, wide receiver from Alabama. This is three from Bama to TCU, by the way. So Brockemeyer, JoJo Earl, and Chris Marshall, I believe, wide receiver at Texas A&M. All to TCU. TCU is making noise. Sonny Dykes is not playing any games at TCU as far as recruiting and in the transfer portal, and that's where he needs to attack it to continue – uh, pretty much what he's he's created this year, being the first year head coach and making the playoffs, uh, a tall tall task. Uh, so uh, big big additions here for him. Um, Grayson McCall in the in the portal. Um, you know, this is one of the hottest quarterback commodities in my opinion. I mean, any program in America that needs a quarterback would be happy to have him. My team included uh, included Florida, uh, Notre Dame. Like I said earlier, South Carolina is right next door with Spencer Rattler in the portal. Um, Grayson McCall could be a really, really, uh, he, he could be the, not only the most wide open, but one of the best, uh, in one of the best positions to really prove himself at either a power five or just wherever he decides to go. So, uh, a really good one there. Um, Travis Hunter, as of today, today is December 21st, 9 PM central time. He has not transferred yet. Uh, we all know that we think it's going to be Colorado, uh, no, you know, no surprise there, but Bama and Georgia are kind of pushing for him. We'll see what happens. I I think it's going to be Colorado. Um, Jeff Sims transfers into Nebraska. Now, Nebraska is interesting. Matt Rule comes from the Carolina Panthers, and he's really making kind of a splash there with with uh, with Matt uh, with Nebraska. Nebraska is using the transfer portal as well, uh, like I said about TCU, and they're doing a damn good job of it. Nebraska has went out and got Donovan McMillan from Florida. Chief Borders from Florida, and Corey Collier from Florida. Uh, Donovan, a safety, Collier, a safety, and Chief Borders, a linebacker. Didn't see much playing time at Florida, but Donovan McMillan, really the, kind of the, the bright spot there. But these kids are all going to go from Florida and get instant playing time at Nebraska, and, and they kind of all went in a bunches. Those are three people, I can already tell you just by being a Florida fan, that they have been – uh, kind of the best of friends. They're kind of like three amigos. So them going there together was definitely planned. They, they, you know, they didn't really want to separate and, but they did want to leave Florida. So uh, interesting get there. Nebraska making moves. Um, we're almost done here. Christian, uh, Christian Leary, wide receiver from Alabama, goes to UCF. Uh, UCF not only uh, gets Christian Leary a highly rated wide receiver from Bama, but they they land uh, Isaiah Nixon uh, from Florida. Uh, flipped him to UCF. And John Walker, um, a, a big four-star D lineman commit uh, on signing day, early signing day, that is. Yes, uh, UCF kind of doing big things. Like I said about Cincinnati going to the Big 12, uh, they're they're recruiting like it, and uh, they're, they're looking good. They're looking good. Um, they obviously have their NIL collective kind of on the rise, and, and the program in general with Gus Malzahn is moving in the right direction, uh, consistently winning over eight games a year uh, ever since Scott Frost started. So, Interesting there. Uh, I said Emory Jones to uh, to Cincinnati. That's the biggest name so far. There's a few more, um, but I'm going to go through and list the the uh, the uncommitted transfers that, like I said at the beginning of the video, the uh, the bigger ones not committed yet, and uh, you know 
all speculation on where they go. But like I said, Spencer Rattler, interesting. He's kind of on the fence. Sam Hartman, kind of the same way, both kind of on the fence of whether, whether they're going to go to the NFL draft or going to transfer. You got Ton Mice Adelaide, defensive lineman for from Texas A&M, one of the biggest uh, – Biggest and highly rated recruits from uh, the 2020 class. Uh, big time D lineman there. He's crystal ball to Michigan State. We'll see if he goes, but big time get in the transfer portal. Marshawn Lloyd, running back from uh, South Carolina, uh, had a really, really good year. Him and Jaheim Bell. Speaking of transfers, Jaheim Bell goes to Florida State, uh, tight end from, from South Carolina. Big get there for Florida State. And, you know, Marshawn Lloyd, a good running back, kind of in a bad, uh, kind of in a bad offense on, on, an okay team, you might say above average, and I would agree with you, but uh, he's in the portal. Uh, Keaton Slovis from Pitt, like we talked about, Justin, uh, not Justin Fields, Jesus, uh, JT Daniels came from Southern Cal, both five stars. Keaton Slovis in the portal again from Pitt, see where he goes. Ventrell Cypress, a uh, cornerback from Virginia Tech. One of the highly rated uh, – actually, I think he is the highest-rated cornerback in the portal right now and uh, still uncommitted. DJ Ukulele, DJ Ui Ungulele. Um, interesting about that one. Um, Crystal Ball to Hawaii, very interesting. His brother, Mateo Ui Ungulele, five-star defensive lineman or defensive end, uh, committed to Oregon. And like I said, uh, Oregon's been or – Oregon feasted today uh, on early signing day. He absolutely – they feasted uh, today. Um, Graham Mertz transferred to Florida. I forgot to mention that one. Graham Mertz to Florida. Now, look, <clears throat> with the Graham Mertz to Florida thing, I don't really know how I feel about it. A lot of people are very upset. They, they want the bigger, higher-rated quarterback in, in the portal because Florida obviously needs one, and they're really upset about getting Mertz, and it was t in talks that he was going to be a preferred walk-on, whether he was or not. Uh, it turns out he is not. He is on scholarship at Florida. If anybody remembers, though, in 2019, when Graham Mertz was uh, at uh, Wisconsin in the COVID year, uh, the dude was absolutely balling out. And he was at like a top 60 quarter, uh, top 60 player in the country, but one of the top quarterbacks uh, as a four star in the country in that class. And I, I feel like he was at Wisconsin for so long. He got kind of buried into that offensive scheme because Wisconsin's offense has been terrible. We know this. With no elite running backs, they they don't throw the ball. That's just not what their identity was under Paul Christ. And so Graham Mertz, look, you can be upset all day long, and I'm not the happiest about it. But if we get the 2019, if we get the if we get the Graham Mertz that has the 2019 in the COVID year uh, was uh, of Wisconsin at Florida, you know he actually could be dangerous with some wide receivers and a better offensive scheme. So uh, arguable point there. Um, but interesting, Naquan Wright, running back from Florida, he is in the portal, hasn't chosen a home yet. That one's interesting. Um, he had a lot of bright spots at Florida, but he kind of got buried on the depth chart after being injured and kind of just never kind of really got back to it. Um, speaking of running back, Cavassier Smoke from Kentucky. Man, he's been at Kentucky for a long time, hasn't really done too, too much, but um, he, he, he's shown very – you know, he's shown glimpses of actually being able to be a, a solid back a, in the college level. Um, Hudson Card, one of the biggest other quarterbacks in the portal right now, um, has no smoke about him at all about where he's going. But Texas transfer quarterback Hudson Card <clears throat> in the portal. It, this was funny. Connor Basilak. Connor Basilak. He transferred from Mizzou to somewhere, and then he's in it again. I, Connor Basilak. I, that's one of the most inter un uninteresting quarterbacks in the portal to me. To be honest with you, <clears throat> um, Malik Hornsby, quarterback for. Arkansas in the portal, real, real true de uh, dual threat guy. This guy's quick. I mean, arguably, uh, like, switch him to wide receiver type quick. I mean, he's really, really quick. But dual threat quarterback there in the portal. Um, no smoke there. Luke Altmeyer, the second string to Ole, from uh, Ole Miss this past season. Another kind of dual threat guy, but uh, never really saw the field as, so much because they had their uh, their starting guy from, from Southern Cal. Um LJ Johnson, running back from Texas A&M, highly, highly rated, still in the portal, not committed yet. Avery Helm, played for a uh, cornerback at Florida. Got a lot of playing time, a good bit of playing time. Did some really good things, to be honest, at times at Florida. Uh, but, you know, with Florida's terrible defense, it hasn't really been able to show his, uh, his true skills. So we'll see uh, about that one. Trey Sanders, former number one rated uh, running back in the class for Alabama. In the portal, he has tweeted to Deion Sanders multiple times. Um, 
you know, this guy had a, had a car wreck and it was very detrimental to his injuries and, and he, well, he got injured from it, but hasn't really been able to step on the field. Now it is Alabama. So can he go somewhere else and thrive? You know, we'll see. Uh, he is interested in Colorado. I do not know if Dion is interested in him per just tracking Twitter post and uh, things like that. Uh, last one, Grant DuBose uh, from Charlotte, I believe. Wide receiver from Charlotte had over 1,000 yards receiving. Really, really, uh, and like I said at the beginning of the video, and we're going to close this out, but um, a big-time FCS player that is just going to probably move up and, and see if he can prove himself in, in a big Power 5 program. So somebody's going to get that kid, and he's either going to translate or he's not. But I, seeing what he's done on the field, uh, it's quite possibly that he translates. Now, that is the biggest news in the transfer portal that I have. Like I said, there's a lot of other guys in there. Of course, I didn't, I didn't mention every single one of them, but um, they're all going to hopefully find a home. Another stat, too, um, we are just at about 23 24% of the transfers that have found a home so far. Um, that's pretty low, to be honest with you, seeing as though we only have a few more weeks to go. And the, the, whole, um, the whole argument with this transfer portal thing is players entering the portal and never finding a home. And so they're kind of screwed. Now you can enter the portal and teams cannot kick you off of the team just because you've entered the portal. But with that being said, you're entering the portal to find a new home, not to stay where you are. So these players do need to think a little bit more uh, strongly about entering the portal and the reasons why, and if they're going to actually be able to end up some way, it's kind of good to have a lead um, as far as like relationships go, if, if you're going to enter the portal. So uh, with that being said, I appreciate you watching. Just a little bit of an update. Um, well, there's a lot of an update. There's just so much going on. Uh, the internet is absolutely breaking right now with, with all this news and everything. But I appreciate you watching. If you're not subbed, I appreciate it if you do sub. And you can hit the like button if you want to. But uh, it's your boy Fish, and I appreciate you watching. We'll see you all later.